Hello, hello everybody, welcome back. In today's video, we will be discussing soil classification. And I have an example showing you how to use both a USCS Unified Soil Classification System and ASH uh, Soil Classification. So keep on watching. Uh, as always, I wanna remind those of you who have an engineering degree from outside of the United States, if you are trying to evaluate your education in this country, I have put together a PDF guide with instructions, step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that. So please click the link below and you'll be able to download it for free. Now let's move on with our example. The table on the left shows sieve analysis data from a soil sample total mass 200 grams. The table on the right shows data derived from the raw data. What is the soil classification using A, USCS and B, ASHTO guidelines? So let's start first by analyzing the soil using USCS. Uh, go to your FE handbook and you'll find your USCS table under the geotechnical. Uh, okay, I have it here already. So you'll find it. Let me go all the way up to the here so there you go it starts here there you go civil engineering geotechnical and if you go down a few pages you'll get to your unified soil classification systems so when using this uh, classification this table Usually we start from the left and we move towards the right. Let's go ahead and uh, think about it. Uh, what type of soil do we have? Coarse grain soil or fine grain soils? In order for this soil to be coarse grain soil, we have to have more than 50% retained on number, number 200 C. Uh, I wanna add that number 200 it's also referred to as the fines. So let's see in our soils how much is uh, passing on the number 200 sieve. We have here, we're given the percentage of passing and we're looking for the number 200 and we have 9.5% passing. Let's go back here. That means that if only 9%, 9.5% passes through the number 200 sieve, that means that we, our soil is a coarse grain soil. Because in order for this soil to be fine grain soil, we have to have 50% or more passing through the number 200, we have only 9.5. So right away we know we are located here. Our soil is somewhere between here let's move even farther so we were, were are done here with this part now we have to figure out if we have gravels or sands in order to do that uh, let's see more than 50 percent of course fraction retained on number four 50 or more passes to number four now let's go and see what is the course fraction retained course fraction is whatever is left without the fines. So we have, let me calculate here, the coarse fraction, coarse fraction gonna, equals to 100 minus fines, which is 9.5 equals to 90.5. Percent. So we also have to calculate how much is 50% out of this course fraction, which is 90.5 times 50% equals to 45.25. So let's see what is the course fraction uh, retained on number four. What is the problem saying? We have the percentage retained. Let's go to number four and see how much do we have retained. We have 
0.5% retained on number four, which is greater than 45.25%. Let's see what that means. If we have greater, more than 50% of course fraction retained on number four, and this is 50% passes. So we have more than 50% retained on number four, meaning our soils are going to be, we're now narrowing down even more. Now we're going to have clean gravels or gravels with fines. Okay, let's see, less than 5% fines, more than 12% fines in order for this to be gravel with fines and less than 5% fines in order for the soil to be classified as clean gravels. Let's see how many percentage of fines. If you remember, we have 9.5% fines. And with 9.5% fines, we don't qualify for neither of these. But look at this uh, C here. Let's see what the C means. C means gravels with five to 12 fines require dual symbol. So our soil eventually has to be one of these four. Now let's move forward and see further. We have to calculate the coefficient of uniformity uh, and coefficient of curvature to be able to do uh, to classify further. So let's cl calculate for that. Coefficient of uniformity equals two. Let's go back and get the formula. D60 over D10, so D60 over D10 equals, and coefficient of curvature equals to D30 squared over D60 times D10. Let's see, I think, I believe I got it right, yes. Let's calculate the D10, D30, and D60. So D10 is the percentage passing that it's closest to 10. Let's look at our table here. We have percentage passing is uh, closer to 10 is 9.5. So uh, D10 is going to be between 9.5 and 21.5, which is going to be between 240. And the grain size is 0 0.075. So my grain size is 0 0.075 and less than 0 0.425. But we know that it's very close to 0 0.075 because we have 9.5. So my grain size, I will say that is 0 0.08. Now, D30, looking here, D30, we have 30.5, meaning D30 is somewhere in between 21.6 and 30.5, meaning it's between uh, number 40 and number 10, which the grain size is 0 0.425. So D30 is greater than 0 0.425 and less than two inches, two millimeters, so, sorry. So D30 so D30 is a little bit less than two millimeters because we need the 30. So I'm gonna say 1.9 millimeters. And let's go next to D60. Let's see the percentage passing. The closest is 60.5, meaning that 60 is in between 41.5 and 60.5, meaning in between number four and half an inch, so 4.75 millimeters and 12.5 millimeters. So D60 is less or equal to 0.475 and less than 
5. Now, what do we know is that it's closer to 12.5 because we have uh, we're close to or almost 60 at 12.5. So let's see our D60. We are going to go ahead and say it is 12 millimeters. So now that we have all our uh, grain sizes for this 60, 10, and 30, let's calculate the coefficient of uniformity and coefficient of curvature. So uh, D60 is 12 over 0 0.08 equals to, we have 150. And then coefficient of curvature, we have 1.9 squared over 12 times 0 0.08 equals. I use my calculator, 1.9 squared, 12, 0 0.08 times divided, we have 376. So let's go with these values to uh, the classification table and uh, make some decision there. So coefficient of uniformity as we calculated is 150 and coefficient of curvature 3.76. Let's see here, what does it say for this soil to be GW, the coefficient of uniformity has to be greater or equal than four. And at the same time, coefficient of curvature has to be greater than one and less than three. So coefficient of uniformity, we do have it greater than four, we have it as 150, but coefficient of curvature is greater than three. So this, it's not GW. Let's move farther. For GP, coefficient of uniformity has to be less than four or uh, coefficient of curvature has to be less than one or greater than three. So in order for this soil to be GP, at least one of this uh, condition has to be uh, true. And as I'm looking at the, this one, we know coefficient of uh, uniformity, we got it as 150. But now let's see farther, coefficient of curvature less than one, we have it at 376 and greater than three. So this is the one that applies. Our coefficient of curvature, it is greater than three, is 376, meaning that our soil is GP. In order for us to uh, find out if this soil is either GPGM or GPGC, as specified here, we would need further information about the plasticity characteristics of the soil. So for now, we're going to stop here. Now let's go and to number B. And the problem asks us to uh, classify the soil using the AASHTO guidelines. Let's go again back to our FE handbook and go to the table, AASHTO table, which is right here. I'm going to do this. Perfect. Okay. Let's see how do we use this table. So first we start here at the general classification and move uh, to the right. So the way you use this table, you go from the top going to the bottom, right? Remember, and previously we went to the left going to the right. Here we go from the top moving downwards. So first we have to uh, see if how many percentage of, pa uh, of uh, fines are passing. Uh, in our case, if you remember, we have 9.5% passing, 9.5% uh, of fines passing. So we are going to be situated here. 
because we have less than uh, 35% passing. So we are going to be situated right here. We're going to have one of these soils. Now, what else are we given? We have this, we have to know how much, what is the percentage of number 10 passing, number 40 and number 200. We already know that number 200, we have 9.5 passing. Let's see number 40, how much do we have um, passing? Number 40, we have 21.5% passing. I'll write it down, 21.5%. And number 10, number 10, we have 30.5% passing. So now let's see, in order for this soil, uh, less than 50% passing, a number 40, 21.5 is less than 30. Number 200, we have 9.5 passing, it's less than 15. And now I'm looking at farther at this group here. I'm noticing that we don't have number 10 at all. So meaning it cannot be this group here. And if you look farther, none of them has. So this soil uh, meets the criteria for uh, A1A group. That's it for today, my friends. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and give it a like because this helps people like you find me. Keep on practicing the FE problems and I will see you next week.